Good morning, everyone. We're back. Chapter 9. Part 2. Phew. I gotta get this book done. Yes. Not sure for what. You know what? It's something I feel... I want to do, and I have to do. <laughs> Regardless of how I feel about it. Right? Right, Kat? Oh. All right, hang on, hang on. There you go. And Bo, Madison, Daddy, where are you? Did makeup go in there, that big dude? I think you'll hurt your purpose, but... And, uh, okay, let's see if I'll give you too much. Well, anyway, both doing better. I could tell right away. I could tell right away when I walked in this morning that he was much better. Bright eye. There's an energy in his body. I love to see. He took it, too. I was worried because it looked like his urine output huh? wasn't too good either. Looking good now. Looking good. Uh, looks like he is still. Yeah, I think he's going to Oh, uh, good job, buddy. Well, sorry. in the barn. And uh, you notice right away, oh, something's wrong. Something's not right. Then you also walk in the barn, you notice that? What? Okay. So obviously what I did, eh, was right, the right thing to do. So, chapter 9, part 2. Your conscience. Everybody has one. Right? Everyone has a conscience. If we like it or not, we do. Right? And our conscience, yeah, I don't think we can be that. Our conscience always wants to steer us into the right direction on what is right, okay? When we uh, disregard our conscience, that's when, uh, yeah, we end up doing things we full well know not to do. It doesn't matter what your beliefs are, you know it. You just know it. Since I've been a child, there was one thing that I seem to just naturally do, and that is study people. And uh, around me, once I kind of woke up to, oh, oh, this is where I'm actually at, not the other world. <laughs> Sometimes I still... Think about that when I later on I would hear people talk about certain childhood memories and all that from two years old or younger, three years old, four years old. Uh, try so hard. Okay, there's got to be something I remember, right? but I don't. I've seen some pictures of places we lived. There's a few, and uh, and then there's this like 
fog where I'm going, yeah, yeah, I think that happened, right? There were other things. Uh, <coughs> one really <clears throat> cute little, super cute little picture of me is sitting on a rocking chair, on a rocking horse, right? And my mom said I was about two, maybe, or even younger. And my mom said, I loved that rocking horse. And it was at the babysitter's, huh? or the friend next door. And when it was time to go home, I would not let go of that. I would not. She said, sometimes I just, you know, carried you right along with the rocking. I would not let go of that. Once I was on there, that was it. Huh? And uh, there's this picture, and there's nothing. I have no recollect, but it's me on that rocking horse. About two years old. Might have been uh, two years old. Yeah. Looks like about two years old. I was very secure on that little rocking horse. So must have been about two. No recollect. None. Even after my mom tells me the story, there's nothing. Nothing there. Yeah. Weird. I don't know. Huh? All right, guys. Come on. So, where was my consciousness, my conscience, my subconscious, where was all that during that time until about the age of six? Then I was awake. I, that was, then I started to notice things around me. It's six, between five and six. I'll say it this way. I still, to this day, sometimes I rake my brain. Okay, there's got to be something I remember specifically. But I don't. Yeah, weird one. Yeah, well, I mean, now I kind of understand that uh, as a child, I spent so much, not because I had any kind of trauma or anything, okay? There's one incident, but I'm not going to get into that. And it wasn't a trauma kind of thing. I can't, I don't look at it as that. But probably is where of the first few days of my life, on uh, certain circumstances that happened there, I was all alone, even in the dark, and uh, was scared of the dark for a long time. All the, as a child, not really scared to the point of I couldn't. I walked in the dark plenty of times by myself, through cemeteries, this and that. That wasn't it. There, it was a different fright uh, when it came to the dark. But that, so at the beginning of my life, as a baby, right, there was a circumstance, I think, during that time, right, the physical world just wasn't, right, if it's all dark, I'm still in the womb, it's dark there, and I uh, just decided, well, I've got this other world that takes such good care of me, really, when it comes down to it, right, when it comes to recognition of anything, your intellect, your, your heart to mind kind of stuff. So even though uh, I had a very good mom taking care of me with everything, Somehow, until a certain age, I just wasn't necessarily there. I wonder. I mean, if, if a child like this born today, you know, I wonder if they would start taking it to, oh, is it normal? This now? I think I functioned perfectly fine. I did everything on the outside that was expected of me, per se. But the memories aren't there. They just are not there. Yeah. So, I have... Uh, <laughs> Became someone that, uh, oh, wait a minute, what am I doing? I need to get the hay up. I became someone who, rather than be as verbal as I am now, you wouldn't believe that, would you? As a very quiet child, I would watch people everywhere I go. I would watch them. I'd watch the teachers. I watch my classmates. I watch uh, other teachers. I watch out and the... Uh, you know, when you had recess and all that. I watched people going home to for lunch or uh, anywhere that I went. I watched people. I watched how they were driving their cars. I watched if they were, uh, uh, how do you say, how do you say, Maverick? Uh, conscientious of other people on the road. How, uh, how did, were they reacting to certain situations? The same in any store. I would watch. How are people reacting to each other? Right? Yeah. 
How are they treating the uh, salespeople uh, uh, when you go shop somewhere? And vice versa. How, how are the salespeople treating uh, their, their uh, customers? So, you guys done? So, uh, one thing I noticed with that too, again, I did not notice that when I was a child. Because I wasn't taught in any of that. There wasn't anybody, you didn't have, uh, what do you call it? Spiritual phenomenon class, right? In school or something. All right, now what, what, it, what you could go through as a child when it comes to spirit world, related to the physical world. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why is that not out there? I think that would help so many children and adults as well. I mean, the real thing, not the, you know, reading cards and, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, well, whatever, okay? Not putting that down again. Huh? People say, so you are against this. No, I'm not. It's just that didn't have, wouldn't have not helped me. If I would have come across someone like that when I was a child going through what I did, the spirit world, well, which was mostly always good, then uh, <laughs> I'd be going, huh? But that's not right. <laughs> right? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> So, <clears throat> the one thing doing that, concentrating on the physical behavior of the people, helped me to gain some uh, freedom when it came to all their thoughts. That also bombarded me. And I did not, it wasn't. I literally had to you know, look at a person and look back at me or whatever, you know. And, uh, and then the body language, that's how it became really good at, at uh, uh, analyzing body language of people. So, <laughs> so sometimes it's like, I'm sit it still happens sometimes when I'm, when I get surprised, someone will look at me huh, and uh, I'm going, I don't think that, ugh, don't, don't, and I, I can close it off right away. And I do not, okay, I've learned that that was my conscience said, you do not do that. No one likes their private thoughts to be on display as it happens to you. So concentrating on people when I was younger, kind of, which then too, you, know, uh, you as a child, how do you control that? So I guess subconsciously, I found ways to have that lesson where I, I, if I didn't listen, it didn't happen, or it wasn't as intrusive right, into my thoughts, into my mind. Yeah, so the one thing, so, I mean, <laughs> with uh, telepathy, right? okay, telepathy is if you can uh, project your thoughts onto someone else, and they literally hear your thoughts, and then their thoughts become your thoughts. That's telepathy. You have to have an object, and it's got to go vice versa. Otherwise, it's not telepathy. Okay? Then it's just what I what happens to me. I not a, I can't. I don't have any gift of telepathy, at all. Okay? Oh, but can I connect, for example, to a spirit, uh, and then uh, at, say in a coma or something like that, or dying? Yeah, that's not telepathy. That's a very natural occurrence that happens when you have give and take with spirit world and the physical world. Yeah.
there are differences, right? There are differences. And if those differences were better uh, uh, explained, right, then we would also know why our conscience, right, it tries to be so on top of it for us to do the right thing. And I think one of the reasons is because our subconscious, okay, our consciousness, our subcon our you know, being conscientious, our conscience right, is has been a part of us since the beginning. Right? It's just there. It's our original nature within each one of us as well. Yeah. And there's no getting around it. You can't. You can numb it completely down right? by just piling more stuff on top of it, dark stuff, where then you, you, you stop to care. Right? When you stop to care, you're capable of atrocious things. Oh, yeah, but people do things because they do care. No, you don't. That's again, I just explained what telepathy is right? and what your conscience is. Right? So, no, no. When you do things to hurt others, when you do things where suddenly the life of a child becomes collateral damage for your greater cause out there, okay, then uh, no, no, you don't care. You have managed to pile so much stuff on top of your original conscience that you don't care. Bottom line, it doesn't matter what you're involved in. That is the bottom line. <clears throat> so, you guys ready? So our conscience, so how do you, yeah. It's, as people try to relate to God, right? Okay. Well, I believe in God. I was raised like this, this, that. And then, of course, the Bible and going to church and Jesus, you know. And yet. It's still very difficult to people, for people, to have this wonderful, beautiful relationship with God. As their one and only, right? Yes. And the reason for that is, man, that is, uh, someone took care of that. Okay, buddy. Yeah, you're definitely uh, much better, I can tell. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Last one, yeah. Matt is already hunting for the best horse apples. Okay, there are you. Come on. Anyway, so if, if you're really, truly, and again, that is up to each one of us. But growing up as a child into an adult, we went farther into, you know, advanced adulthood, this and that. I've not found anything, really. I had, I had help, as I've explained in another video, with certain other books that I read of other people on earth, this snap. Huh? Because there are, there is, we waste a lot of time here, right? On earth, doing all kinds of things we don't need to do. Huh? Just adds, piles up on stress, this snap. Huh? There's no stress in spirit world. And the reason there is none there, right, it is so just, they're very persistent with certain things, okay? Yeah, we're not going to move on until that's done. You've got to do this first, you know? And there's nothing comes, yes. It's, it's like, okay, all right, then. Uh, many, with many other different things, the same thing. They just don't waste their time. Right? There's no wasting time there, which is odd because it's eternity. Here, we only live for so long and we're wasting so much time on things we don't need to waste our time on, right? Shouldn't. If you want to live anxiety, stress-free, depression-free, right? Unhappy-free. Yet, we do all that, right? In spirit world, that doesn't exist. 
So when one has give and take with spirit rope, I could, if I wanted to, kind of go, okay, all right, guys, so what you want me to talk about? So here's the answer. Keep going. We're listening. <laughs> right? Yes. But it wasn't a whole, suddenly an onslaught of, well, say this, say that, da da da. Well, we know, you know, because they have all the answers. Really? Do they have all the answers? They have all the solutions. Okay? The solutions are all there. As far as answers go, no, no, they're not. Because there's always a future. The future exists per se in spirit world. If anything exists in spirit world, it is the future, right? Yeah, so spirit world will work with you where they deem, per se, it necessary to show theirself, if you want to call it that, or uh, uh, where the two worlds suddenly merge. Uh, people call that a vision, a spiritual experience, or whatever, right? And when you really look at your life, they happen probably more often than not. If your conscience is in the right place, you know about your conscience and you pay attention to your conscience. Yes, do that. No, don't do that. Who do you think that is? Who keeps reminding you? Very strictly. I said, if you really pay attention, do it one day, all day long. You get up in the morning, Okay, what's my conscience say? Well, first of all, say thank you that you got up, I guess. For most people, it will be that. What's the next thing? I probably should have a cup of tea first and some water before I have those three cups of coffee. Uh, right there. You see, I'm just, those, those are just a couple of examples. Watch yourself. What, how, how does your conscience guide you throughout the whole day? I guarantee you there's one thing that your conscience will advise you to do or be okay with that is not 100% within the realm of the principles of love and the principles of creation. I guarantee you that 100% right now. Fact. Absolute 100% fact. Okay. Piggy agrees. Everybody's out. <coughs> Ta da! Conscience. Yeah, and uh, people have, if they believe it or like it or not. Honey, do you want to come out? Hi. How did your first night go in here? Huh? How did it go? Midnight stayed in that barn. It's getting cooler out in the house, and uh, so that's the, she's, she likes to be in the house, too, when it gets cold. And, of course, you know, she, she's not going to go into her uh, little uh, box with her straw in and all that. That'd be too boring, right? She looks what the other ones, the dogs are doing, and says, oh, that chair looks good, too, to me. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, look, honey, I'll put that up there. Is that good? Huh? She's looking at me like. So when I carried her out here yesterday morning, I thought, oh, am I doing the right thing? You know, it's kind of. You know, she kind of likes to be around people, this, that. Now, here she's around the horses, you know, around all the chickens, whatever. And uh, I thought, am I, am I just being selfish now, you know, not wanting to pick up a little chicken poop, you know. And I'm going, wait a minute. I just had to, to take two. Okay, the one chair was from one of the dogs, got all dirtied up, but... The other one was definitely from chicken poo. And I said, wait a minute, I just had to pull all the blankets off the chairs. I'm yep, she's smart enough there putting the blankets off. Because, uh, okay, so simple example. I know to put some blankets, which are easy to wash and, and take care of, uh, uh, because the animals do, I said, well, don't have the animals. I said, well, yeah, okay, all right. Or I'm not that strict. <laughs> Okay. when it comes to all that. Nobody's allowed in my bed, that's that. Yeah. But otherwise, it's all old furniture. But in order to keep my old furniture at least somewhat presentable than when I have 
people coming to sit, right? uh, I'll have blankets over it that I can easily pull off, put a new one on, the snout, and it's clean again. Oh, well, I guarantee you my conscience says, well, don't start nagging and knick-knacking at other people or your animals if a simple thing like that you're not willing to do, which uh, kind of uh, still work, but lot mu much less damaging and stinky if you have something covering your furniture, for example. So it's a, that's a very simple example of. And then when you don't do it, and then stuff happens, man, man, when people get mad, and I don't know why, or don't close the door, for example, to their rooms, and then it's all, man, man, and I'm going, okay, what would your conscience say right now? You knew better. You knew better. Because an animal always only, huh? for example, an animal, uh, uh, adhere to, the, to their instinct. And their instinct is, ooh, I know where the softest place is to sleep. Yeah, for example. They don't have. Animals and plants don't deal with a conscience, okay, on what is right or wrong. They just do. Their instinct is their conscience, per se, or their guide. It's not the same for human beings. Anyway, so, a little difference there. Because some people... They uh, like to uh, uh, compare themselves to just being a part of the principles of creation. Well, we're just a different animal. No, you're not. <laughs> you're absolutely not. That's wrong. And your conscience will tell you so. And if your conscience doesn't tell you so, then uh, you're lying. If you say, well, no, you're lying. And you know it. I'm not going to be dissuaded again. <clears throat> by uh, certain things that people just do and then uh, and then their conscience just gets more and more covered up and they become more and more numb and care less and less and uh, and then I'm supposed to uh, approve that oh yeah okay that's not going to happen because my conscience is still intact absolutely intact so Uh, yep, there we go. And that is one way where, again, if you start to practice your conscience, pay attention to your conscience and just follow that. Just follow that. Oh, are you going to be 100% if you, I don't know how you provide, run, honest, Every time, or willing, willing, you got freedom of will. You can absolutely disregard your conscience. You can absolutely disregard anything that comes from your original mind. You have that right. That is your freedom of will. Absolute freedom. Huh? Absolute freedom. But here's the thing, too, with that. And if you do that, you will start to realize. Oh, this isn't just really great for my life. I make my decisions are so much better in many ways. Even if you're a really good person, this that you will <coughs> <coughs> you will improve your the quality of your life immensely. Yeah. Some people may think, well, I don't really need to do that. You know, I've already I'm already, you know. But the thing is, then ask yourself, what's my relationship with God? Oh, wait a minute, do I have one? Oh, wait a second, I do go to church, I do read the Bible to snap, but do I actually, really, truly believe in God? Do I? Ask your conscience, do I? I have uh, recently, uh, oh, so when... Uh, Then when you start to accumulate things on top of your conscience that should be there or not right and uh, or hurting other people, then uh, 
things go really wrong. But things will not just go wrong for you, they will go wrong for everyone else out there as well. That's the, uh, one calls it a collective sin, right? Yes, where, uh, where it's not just you, but you're dragging other people into it. I found, I found that, I found, and I found that to be 100% true. If I follow my conscience, I will never need to use violence. Now, I had to learn that too, okay, by the way. I wasn't, yeah. I mean, I was growing up around people too, okay? But I've learned that. If. And the thing is, another thing I also noticed that, oddly, following my conscience, wasn't ever really a loss to me in any way. But I noticed that it could be due to then certain decisions that I have to make, per se, could be a loss to others. Yeah, well, sorry. I'm going to stick to what I feel wastes the least amount of time on earth in my life. And on how I actually really truly become worthy of having been born into this world. Given to us, right? of course, by our heavenly parent. To take care of, to use, but never abuse. So, when you start to follow your conscience, you practice, and of course suddenly you don't, <laughs> it's like driving a car, right? <laughs> Had to begin with it. Watch every turn. Okay, where's the? Uh, and I learned on a stick shift. Uh, uh, right? And then suddenly it becomes more and more and more just a part of you. Then you can start listening to music. Okay, responsibly. Talk to people responsibly. Yeah. No, I wouldn't use a cell I don't have a cell phone. And, uh, and it becomes more and more just a part of your life. You will be amazed the changes you will see happening in your life. In your immediate person. The angst, the anxieties, the depressions, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the I don't know, all these things out there have to say, what? Why are people dealing with so much stuff? Ah, because we convolute our life. Right? In spirit world, that doesn't happen. Spirit world, uh, in spirit world, there is not one life convoluted. There is just right and there's wrong. And then you are according to what lifestyle you have, where your conscience fits. Oh. Right? How grown? How, well, you know, how intact is your conscience? And, uh, and then the, the, it's also, this, it's a no-nonsense no, no -nonsense environment. No stress, no this, no that. Just waiting. People waiting for you to make a move. And once you make a move, you've got all the help you need. As long as you don't make that move on your own, just like here on Earth. Same thing, yet our conscience, no one can deny their conscience, you can't, even a child, because it's so, uh, did you do that? You can tell right away if they did or not. You can tell right away. And if you nip that in the butt, yeah, uh, early enough and teach them about conscience, uh, then uh, one the parent won't have to, I don't know what to do with him or her anymore, this or that. As soon as you're, oh, and I, sometimes children are just mischievous, okay? They're practicing being a person in the world. And I've said this before, beware. Well, maybe, maybe I'll have a video on that. Beware, children hear and see everything, okay? And then they make 
have their own ideas about it. So that's very important to teach a child. Okay, why did you do that? Ask himself, why did you do that? And then, you know, you have a conscience. Did your conscience, did you listen to your conscience? And then, you know, okay. Okay, I don't like that because now so I'm not going to give it. <laughs> conscience, that's the voice inside of you letting you know if you're doing something right or wrong. Did you listen? Oh, oh, you forgot to listen. But if you would have listened, what would that voice have said to you? What would you, and use the word conscience, right? use the proper words. So children, they love. Once they uh, uh, discover the world of language, they love it. It's like driving the car for the first time for teenagers, right? Getting to say, oh, we'll go everywhere. It's the same for children with language. Right? Or walking. Yeah. Or uh, certain other things. For some children, it's math. Which, of course, is not as, okay, so for some it's reading. Okay, that's when they get older. But language is one of the first things that they then can express this, that, and already show. And we pay very little nowadays. Not everyone. I know parents who do that very well. <clears throat> but a lot of parents don't. Because you're too busy with what? Yeah. You can do both. Ask your conscience. Uh, do I have a good balance there? And teach, as I said, your children. When, make, a, make a, a, an opportunity of mischief, uh, or sometimes downright meanness, an example to teach them about conscience and how they can know very well. And then they know, you know. When you tell them, that you know exactly what you did wrong. You know that. Unless, of course, you have taught your child to hit someone. How do you do that? Okay, all right. All right. Then the child says, well, yeah, I did the right thing according to you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Beware of that one. Yes, yeah, see? Aha. Then you have to ask your own conscience. Why is my child behaving the way it is? Aha. Okay. Good. All right. Yes. I wish I had a parent told me that. Anyway, as many things I wish that another parent would have told me, I was so happy to hear from that pediatrician who also was a parent. Don't worry about when, when uh, they go into one of those crying fits over something and then suddenly just seem like dead. Don't breathe. They're, not, they're still breathing. Just ignore them. Yeah. Now, those are my children didn't have any health problems, okay? Sheesh, one has to mention everything. So... If you have a child with breathing problems and they do that, you know, don't think they're having a hissy fit. All right, okay. Is that clear? No? I have to explain everything so thoroughly. So that, as I said, to people who want to come back with, you said, I'm like, okay, ask your conscience what I actually said. All right. Isn't that something? I tell you what. When you, when you do that, Every day, regardless, okay? And yeah, I still have some things to work on as well. But you get to a point where you suddenly realize, I have a relationship with my heavenly parent. I mean, I have a good uh, parent-child relationship with my heavenly father, with my heavenly parent in spirit world. You start to realize... Whoa, wait a minute. All that going to church and all that Bible reading and all that other stuff. Wow. It's true. It's true. That world exists 100% above and beyond this physical one. And your conscience will guide you and teach you to a true belief of that. Yeah. Really? Yes. And while you're at it, you know, get the divine principle by, uh, by uh, uh, Reverend Song Myung Moon that he wrote, Gosh Almighty, just about a hundred years ago now. Okay, not quite. 
or started up on it. It's an amazing book that is so wonderful in, uh, and then has all these references to the Bible in it as well that then you can, again, huh? this book isn't just on its own. It wasn't just written because someone had some other theo uh, the 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 theological ideas to snap. It was written right, as an extension of the Bible, per se. Nothing added to the Bible to snap, right, but as an extension of understanding. On how you're willing to take that, that's up, <laughs> that's up to you again. It's an amazing book. It has all these references to the Bible, and you can go back and say, oh, wow, yes. Right? Yeah? <coughs> anyway. I would never... No, I, I'm good. I... Je ne regrette rien. As one would say in France. Anyway... I, my whole life's journey has been one of wonder. And, and uh, some people have asked me, so, oh, so uh, you're going to turn 30, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Well, aren't you, I can't believe, why are there so many people out there when they're turning 30, for example, that's, well, they just, well, that's just about the end of their life or something. Right? For me, it was, I love it. I loved it. I loved it because I've gained higher status as a human being in the world. Through my age? Yes. <laughs> 40, the same thing. 50, a half a century. Now I'm going towards 60. A half a century people have a... a 50 years old doesn't sound so when other people are 90 and 100 and 109, as I've just seen. But 50, if you say a half a century, that sounds elevated. <laughs> to me, that sounds like royalty. And I can't wait to get older. Okay, I can wait for my body to just fall apart more than it already has. But that's been going well too. Yes, that's been going well too. <laughs> I can one say that, I guess. Well, anyway. <coughs> I have learned. I'm still learning. All through my life. That your conscience is the one thing you should not, uh, uh, I don't know if anybody noticed, I'm having a, an allergic reaction to the last thing I can take for pain, that's aspirin. <laughs> so no more aspirin for me either, which, you know, every once in a while. But that's the end of that too. It's all right, I'm not in pain, so hopefully I won't ever be. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's all good. I've learned my lesson there. Maybe I'll make a video of that. Oh, I've got two. Yeah, see, two, two parts. Part three, part four. Children and medicine. Uh, I'm still learning. After all, I'm only, only a half a century old, plus a few years. So uh, I still have some time to perfect that. To really get good at listening, uh, considering, uh, consider, oh, let's see, absolutely make my original nature and conscience my guide, uh, a part of me, 100% and absolutely. And then guess what? Then your spiritual body and your physical body merge. And that's an whole, whole other story as well. As I have said, uh, when we went through the Ten Commandments in the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, or the Lord's Prayer mainly attaching the Ten Commandments to it, where that prayer has just become a part of me. Okay. So did the prayer adapt, adopt me? Or did I adopt the prayer? Which one do you think it is? I know which one it is. 
It's very simple. I asked Mikasa, what do you think? Said, uh, uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Okay. <laughs> it's neither. The rooster. <laughs> All right. Um, God's love and blessings always. That's what I want to talk about today. Explore, rediscover, or if you're already on that, continue to nurture your conscience. Uh, a well-balanced uh, human being uh, uh, following the uh, principles of creation and the principles of love and having a truly good, true relationship, uh, 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 father or parent-child relationship with our creator is incredibly valuable in this world right now. That has incredible value and can create or can have incredible things happening. We sometimes don't even realize, right? Yes, again, yeah. spirit world can work with, things, with people like that. All right, got something blessed because I always will talk to you another time. Chapter nine, part two, conscience, your conscience. Your conscience knows, 100% your conscience knows. If you're honest with yourself, truly honest, and you listen from your true heart to mind. All right, one more time. God's love and blessings always. And we'll talk to you another time.